sample problem number 5 for internal force convection. So for problem number 5, we're given with a, a pipeline. It's a pipeline that passes through an icy lake, which is at 0 degrees Celsius. So the temperature of the water as it enters the pipe, before it enters the, this icy region, is 20 degrees Celsius. And since this is a very cold environment, so it is expected that the temperature would decrease. But we do not know yet the exit temperature. But we're given with the diameter of the pipe as 0.3 meter, the velocity of the oil that flows inside the pipe that is 2 meter per second, and then the length of the pipe within this region is 200 meters. So this is a uh, very long pipe, 200 meters. So, this regarding the thermal resistance of the pipe material, we need to determine the temperature of the oil when the pipe leaves the leak. So, what is the exit temperature? The rate of heat transfer from the oil because of the temperature difference. So, these are our assumptions. Steady operating conditions. Surface temperature of the pipe is very nearly 0 degree Celsius because the icy lake is also 0 degree Celsius so we also assume the temperature of the the surface temperature of the pipe to be uh, equilibrium at 0 degree Celsius thermal resistance is negligible that is actually given the inner surfaces of the pipeline are smooth so the, the flow of the oil is not impeded the flow is hydrodynamically develop so when the the oil reaches this particular point the flow is already developed it could either be turbulent or laminar so now so usually we evaluate the properties using the bulk temperature but since we do not have exit temperature so we will use the the entering temperature to evaluate the properties of of the oil so this is also one of supposedly one of our assumptions here so at 20 degrees celsius we will find for the density the dynamic and kinematic viscosities and then we have the specific heat for oil at 20 degrees celsius so for for oil so we're referring to engine oil here at 20 degrees Celsius, we can look for the density, the CP, the dynamic, and the kinematic viscosities. As well as the Prandtl numbers. So the exit temperature can be calculated using the formula that we have in slide number 24. So... If you are familiar, so we have here an exit temperature can actually be determined when it is not given. In terms of the these values here, we have Ts, the surface temperature, minus Ts minus T, the initial temperature, multiplied by e to the power of the negative of H, the surface area, the mass flow rate, and then the Cp. So we can get the value of exit temperature. So going back. Okay, so we can use this equation. If you're going to look at the equation, we already have surface temperature. That is 0 degrees Celsius. The inlet temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Um... We already have CP as well as so those are the values that we have the rest are still unknown so we will look for first the area so for the surface area since this is a cylindrical pipe so we can solve as pi dl the diameter is 0.3 length is 200 meter so that's why we have 188.5 meter squared for the mass flow rate so remember that the density is mass divided by volume. 
So solving for the mass mass is equals to density times volume. But since we're looking for mass flow rate, so if we are looking for mass flow rate, we will also use volume flow rate. So density times volume flow rate. And then we know that volume flow rate is area, cross-sectional area times the velocity. Diba? Q is equals to AB. So that's why we have this formula. Density times cross-sectional area times the velocity. Substituting. So we already have density from our properties. The cross-sectional area of this pipe. So the cross-sectional area is different from the surface area. So the cross-sectional area is the area of the cross-section of the circle, which is pi r squared or pi over 4 d squared times the velocity of the oil, which is 2 meter per second. So that is why we have here 125.6 kilogram per second. So this is the mass. So we already have mass. We already have AS. So next is the H. So what is the value of H? So we don't have H, but from our previous experience, we usually get H from the Nusselt number. So from this relationship, from this definition of the Nusselt number, we can get the value of H by rearranging this equation. We already have K, we already have D. We don't have the Nusselt number yet. So we also know from experience that in order to solve the Nusselt number, we need to solve first the Reynolds number so we are already very much familiar with the formula for reynolds number this is the formula for the reynolds number in terms of this one and in terms of mu so that's actually the other equation that's actually the same result so we plug in the the values for velocity then the rest of the values so that we can get the reynolds number so the Reynolds number is less than 2,300. So if it is less than 2,300 for internal force convection for circular tube or pipe, the flow is therefore laminar. So how do we evaluate Nusselt number if the flow is laminar? So looking at uh, slide number 29 for developing laminar flow. So for developing laminar flow, so the assumption for using this equation is that L must be large such that NU approaches 3.66 which, which means that the flow is fully developed. Meaning the flow is already laminar when L is large. So that's why we can use this equation. So we will use this equation for finding the value of the nasal number so, sub so for the nasal number we just substitute what we already have diameter 0.3 length which is 200 meter the reynolds number which is already 636 and the prantil number which is from the table just be careful with the parentheses and the brackets here so we have nasal number 37.32 so when we already have the Nusselt number, we can go back to our H and solve for the value of H by substituting for the Nusselt number. So our H is therefore 18.04. And then, finally, we can go back to our original equations for the exit temperature, substituting the values. So this is E, Euler's number, to the power of these values here. So all of these are actually powered to the power e to the power of these values don't forget the negative sign and then the rest of the values so the exit temperature is actually 19.71 degree Celsius so somehow the pipe is uh, really uh, insulated properly no because the temperature slightly changed from 20 degrees Celsius 20 degrees Celsius it became 19.71 degrees Celsius so we already have temperature of the oil when the pipe leaves the lake. So we will calculate the rate of heat transfer of the oil. 
So for the rate of heat transfer for the oil, we are familiar with the equation already. So we just need to solve for delta, the LMTD. So LMTD, so we have delta T exit, so that is, that is 19.71. Uh, sorry, that's not. We have 0 minus 19.71. So actually, this is uh, baliktad, no? So dapat 0 minus 19.71 and then 0 minus 20. So the same result actually, negative 19.855 degrees Celsius. So this should be. Uh, 0 minus 19. So this one, instead of 0, this is 19.71. And for minus delta t in inlet, so 0, this should be 0 minus 20. So as you can see, this is still the same. So we have negative 19.71. 0 minus negative. So this is negative really. So, and then the denominator is correct. So, we have delta the LMTD as negative 19.855 degrees Celsius. So, this is the temperature, the average temperature of the pipe. So, thus, we can solve for Q by substituting the values. So, this is negative because, as you can see, the pipe uh, is actually losing it's actually losing heat because of this icy condition so this is our rate of heat transfer